I just jumped out of a meeting in which we used the PTAS technique, and I just wanted to share with you what it looked like. There were just two of us in the meeting, a friend and I talking about a business that we might start. So we began with the purpose. This is what it would look like if I were drawing it in front of an audience. I'd write purpose and I'd put it in a black box. And then I'd ask, what's the purpose of this meeting? So we had two goals. The first one was to share some information. And the second one was to make a decision about what we were going to do next. So this is how it would look like if I were facilitating this. I would probably be standing more to the side so that people could see when I was writing. So that's the purpose and we make sure that everyone agrees with that. If we start a meeting and people don't agree on what the purpose is, it's better not to start the meeting. So after the purpose, we discuss the time. Now initially, I thought it was going to be a one hour meeting, but it turned out that my friend had all the time in the world. So as much time as necessary. So that was something that I learned just by asking that question. That's one of the reasons that PCAS is so powerful. We think everyone is going to agree, but in fact we discover that there are disagreements and we learn things when we go through PTAS. And finally, the agenda. Now there were a total of seven items on the agenda. I'm not going to write all of them down. The first one was survey results. And the second one was conference strategy. And then, of course, at the end of the meeting, we did a summary. And the summary, again, looks just like this, okay, with a blue heading, brown bullet points underneath it, orange dots on the side. And in this particular case, the summary consisted of a set of action items. So each person needed to do something. I'll just write one of those down. So that's it. That's an example of how we actually used PTAS in a 100 minute meeting that I just walked out of and how helpful it was in organizing the meeting. So go ahead and consider using that technique at your next meeting, whether it's a planning meeting, a retrospective, a review, or any other type of meeting. And if you're not the one who's facilitating the meeting and the person is not going through these things, consider using guerrilla facilitation to get at the same questions. Enjoy.